Hi everyone and welcome to this week's vlog. A special hello to all of my new subscribers. I'm so thankful that you're here and uh, yeah, it's another week in the winter up here in Sweden. As you know, the winter has been really tough. It's been super, super cold, super windy. Even my neighbor says it's never been this bad. And um, the thing is, it will still be winter for another two and a half months or so. So I gotta be patient. Spring will come eventually, but I'm gonna try to get some spring into this home um, by doing an ikebana this week. And I'm also going to start some indoor gardening. Um, not even, not only pre-cultivating stuff, but also growing some microgreens indoors. So let's see how that goes. Um, I'm gonna get started with that now. I'm still working on my little gardening room upstairs. So this will have to do for now, the setup. Um, I think I'm gonna start with these. These are um, just normal yellow peas, I think, dried ones. And I'm gonna make some pea shoots with them, hopefully. I'm um, gonna show you what they look like. Tatsui, Tatsui, uh, Brassica narinosa, and uh, this is a Japanese microgreen. Um, I think you can also um, grow it bigger, like a pak choy um, or bok choy, I think it's called in English. And um, yeah, I'm gonna try making some microgreens with it and put it in my Japanese dishes. So yeah, let's try that out. I bought this spray bottle on Amazon and it makes like a super fine mist. I feel like it's the perfect thing for pre-cultivations and doing indoor gardenings. And it's done. <laughs> Hopefully the, what was it again? Tatsoi will turn on grey. <laughs> Next up are mustard and kohlrabi microgreens. These microgreen kits are super practical, obviously more expensive than just taking seeds and doing the whole thing yourself, but these are a great way of growing microgreens when you don't have much time or don't want to make a mess at home with soil and so on, which is totally understandable. Last but certainly not least, I'm going to make some coriander sprouts in this glass. Um, I think I'm going to have to put them in water first for a couple of hours and then um, change the water or wash them every couple of hours. Um, and then in about 10 days I should have some nice coriander sprouts in here, which I'm very excited about because I love coriander. Um, I will definitely keep you posted with all of these, how all of this goes. Um, and uh, how they turn out and um, yeah hopefully this inspires you to get started with some growing indoors <laughs> Tommy and I have been playing Parks a lot lately. It's a very chilled out board game that is made with so much love and so much attention to detail. And you basically go around and visit national parks in the US. <laughs> and yeah, I just love this game so much and it calms me down so much. Although I can get pretty competitive. To 
today I'm making brothy pinto beans. I've already soaked them for the night and uh, now I'm gonna make um, a lemony oniony broth to go with the pinto beans and um, yeah we're gonna top it off with some crispy dino kale or black cabbage. So let's do that. These beans are really easy to make, but unfortunately they have a very long cooking time, so keep that in mind. Depending on your tap water, it can take between one hour or three hours until they're soft. The directions are simple. I just roughly cut up some celery, carrots and leek. And I use half an onion and around four garlic cloves. The amount of water depends on the amount of beans. I put as much water needed to cover them. And I add half an organic lemon, some thyme, a splash of yondu, some olive oil, black pepper, and two bay leaves on top. Then onto the stove it goes. For me it took about two hours. I'm making my crispy cabbage recipe again with lemon rind, pepper, salt, garlic and olive oil. I preheat the oven to 140 degrees Celsius and I bake them there for around 20 minutes until crispy and delicious. You might be wondering why I didn't salt the beans. I always do that last, after I took out the celery and carrots. I also add some lemon rind in the end and some miso paste for some more umami. And that's it. It's such a comforting meal. On my plate I like to add some wild garlic oil, a sprig of thyme and some vegan creme fraiche or sour cream. Yuzu tea is so good. Um, it's basically a jam and you just fill it up with water and it's so so nice. I definitely have to make a yuzu glaze with that jam for tofu or something. I'll think about something. <laughs> mm. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really tried this week to get out of this little winter depression I'm in. Um, obviously I don't want to throw around the word depression lightly. Um, I know how it is when you're really in it. But I could really feel like um, I was getting a little sad because there's still so much to go with winter and um, yeah, 
yeah, this week really helped me to get a bit of a spark back and um, the flowers in my home, all of the stuff growing just makes me so excited for spring. If you haven't subscribed, maybe hit that button right now and I'll see you here again very, very soon. Bye.